Welcome back to another episode of Light Beer, Dark Money. I'm Sean Noble. And I'm Chris Clements. And it is good to be back together. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking across the table. I'm like, who is that strange person across yeah. there? It's kind of but uh, a bit but of I had some fun yeah. last week. Yeah. You know, being by myself, I, I lost my voice at the end of I it. Know. You did of my little, little rant. But, uh, but we have a special guest here. We today. do. I mean, yeah. very, very special guest. Well, we have Karen Taylor Robeson and... Uh, you know, well known amongst all of our audience for sure. Uh, a wonderful Arizonan, lifelong Arizonan, and uh, one of the leaders in our community for many, many years. And who I think it's safe to say we both wish was governor right now. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, as do I. Yes. <laughs> as do you. Shocking that you might think that. <laughs> yes. Um, so, Karen, you are. Uh, you have. You're not. Give, you know, you're not stopping. You ran for governor and didn't make it. And a lot of people would say, well, you know. I'm going to go vacation for the rest of my life and do nothing. But you obviously, have, you know, you've always been a workhorse. And here you are now diving deep into the balanced budget amendment. So tell us about that. How in the world? I mean, one, I'm a big believer in this. So that's. Uh, yeah, we both are. Yeah, for sure. So I understand why, but how? How did you get involved? Okay, well, before I do that, um, I'll say why. Right, um, I, I did not have the outcome that I wanted in, in my election. And uh, the next day I woke up at five o'clock in the morning like I normally do and said, okay, where do I go next? Um, I went back to my office and uh, you know, started back to work, but, uh, which I you know, should be doing more of, like my day job, <laughs> um, but I can't help myself. Uh, and and you know, just political things and policy things uh, kept calling. and. Um, I, I had to respond, and the balanced budget amendment is one of those things. I actually received a call from uh, Governor George Allen of Virginia, former governor of Virginia. We know George Allen. Yep. And I love George Allen. <laughs> yeah. He's <a> great. <laughs> and um, Senator Coleman, former Senator Coleman from uh, Minnesota, and they asked me to get involved. And quite frankly, I'd heard about it, but really didn't know much about it. So I, of course, you know, did a little bit of due diligence and homework, and and uh, realized that where we are now is a very precarious place. Mm -hmm. um, the balanced budget amendment effort was actually started years and years ago, and it was originally led by, by Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, we had a $1 trillion debt at the time <laughs> Ronald Reagan was involved. And he was, you Which know, he, was a, uh, he was appalled by. He was appalled by. <laughs> and... Um, he led an effort to get up to 33 states to call a convention, mm. which is not our strategy. I mean, that wasn't his strategy either. His strategy, as is ours, is to force Congress to act. Right. Because Congress needs an intervention. <laughs> they need to go on a diet. Uh, and interestingly enough, member, former members of Congress have now joined our effort because they know they can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a state-led initiative being led by governors. Um, and, and interestingly, 49 out of our 50 states have balanced budgets. They have balanced budget amendments and requirements in their constitution. Uh, the only state, not surprisingly, that doesn't have a balanced budget requirement is Vermont. Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, the governors know how to do it, and they've done it. And so today we have several sitting go governors helping us. We have Governor Sununu, Governor mm -hmm. Stitt, Governor Cox, uh, Governor Noem, uh, Governor Pillen of Nebraska, uh, and that list is growing. We also have a number of former governors, including our own Governor Doug Ducey, who just uh, added his name to the list. That's great. And great. It's, and it's bipartisan. We, we have, um, unfortunately, we had Governor Richardson of Nebraska, right. or excuse me, of New Mexico, New Mexico, and Ben Nelson, former senator and governor sure. of Nebraska, uh, governor, uh, or uh, not governor, Senator Lieberman. So mm. it's a bipartisan issue. The mm -hmm. governors know this is not just a Republican and Democrat thing. But um, our, our debt today is $33 trillion. And, and Washington, as long as they can continue to print money, they will. And there is a leading Republican, who I, I won't name his name, you could look, look this up, but a leading Republican senator who said, as long as we can keep printing money, we will continue to get elected. Jeez. So. Yeah. Um, no incentives. No incentive at all. Well, I mean, they've kind of figured it out. I've, I've read a little bit about this. They've mm -hmm. figured it out back in the 80s, right? So, so as long as we don't raise taxes, 
and we keep flooding flooding the government with plenty of money, we'll all be fine. Democrats, Republicans. As well, long as I'm a Democrat, I'm not for raising taxes, but I'm bringing home the bacon. Yeah. And the same thing for Republicans in Republican areas. Well, and it's it's and it is so necessary because there there is no check. I mean, there really is no check on yeah. anyone. And and I mean, whether you can say you're as fiscally conservative as as, as you are as you can be till the cows come home, but we see the guys and women who claim to be fiscal conservatives, you know, spending inordinate amounts amounts of money. I mean, the the debt has you know as you pointed out, it was one trillion when. Reagan was president. It's now thirty-three trillion. The last two presidents, Biden and Trump, have been the worst offenders. Yeah. Trump increased it by ten trillion dollars in four years, and Biden is at you know in three years he's at like eight or seven. So I mean, it, you know, the, the, we're getting exponentially worse. Yeah. It's not getting anywhere close to better, and uh, there is, you know, it, it's it goes back. You know, and it, it is a bipartisan issue in the sense that it's a bipartisan problem because both yeah. Republicans and Democrats are spending like the drunken sailors. And I, I'll never forget a story. When John Shattuck, when, when George Bush, W. Bush got elected, the second day he was in office, he called, well, the first day he had some members of Congress, but Shattuck was a part of a group of members of Congress that went over to the White House the second day he was in office, after he was inaugurated. And he said, look, I've been a governor. I'm a chief executive. I understand that I'm the check on your spending habits. And so, you, you know, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And unfortunately, it was, he never vetoed a bill. No. He never vetoed a bill. He had a Republican House and Senate, and he never held the line on spending, and these guys went crazy. And, you know, it's, and then, then it happened with Obama, and then it happened with Trump. You know, it's just, a, it's a cycle that we have to get out of. And Absolutely. And, and you know, you talk about thirty-three trillion dollars. Nobody knows what that is. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it is so big. Um, but when you break it down, it's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for every household. It's mm. over a hundred thousand dollars for every child born. So your child is born, comes out of the womb with a price tag on his or her big toe. Yeah. Hundred thousand dollars. Wow. And growing. That's unbelievable. It is unconscionable that we do this to our kids. So we got we to gotta do something. And in President Trump's defense, that $10 trillion, a lot of it was COVID. Right. But it still does not at all justify the rest of it. Well, and, it, and the problem was that that now became kind of the new That baseline. became the new baseline. And every, every chance we try to, every argument we try to make to go back to the 2019 baseline is is well and is, is considered this huge cut, which right. is not. And, and, and isn't this... Perfectly good timing. We have a this speaker race issue. This the, the you know the removal of McCarthy was is supposedly overspending, right? Well, that's what Matt Gates said. I mean, I don't about. believe him. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> turns out it was about his ethics issues. Yeah, well, and his <laughs> fundraising <laughs> abilities. And his fundraising abilities. Yeah. Um, so, but I it covered is, that last is, week. But but this <laughs> but this issue really is timely in the sense that, I mean, we're seeing in real time. The fact that these guys claim to be fiscal conservatives, and yet it's it's came, well, they they have voted you know they voted against what McCarthy was trying to do, which was actually a cut. Yeah. And so what we got was a CR, which was continuing this, and we're now going to be right before Thanksgiving. And you know what? Because of what they did, because of what Matt Gates did on the motion to vacate, he's now made it so that we are going to go into next year. Have being funded by an omnibus. Yep. This this is we're not going to have regular order. And no. he did this, and and did, so it only makes this balanced budget amendment that much more important. That's right. There's there's no question. Uh, the circus back there, you know, Americans are tired of it. And and you know, it's not a Republican or Democrat issue. It's impacting everybody. You know, it, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. You print more money, leads to inflation, leads right. to interest rates. People can't buy houses. Everybody is impacted by it. So I have a 13-year-old, and he's learning this right now. <laughs> yeah. He, goes, you know, he said to me the other day, you know, Dad, why there's inflation? I go, why? He goes, because the government prints money. Like, good for okay. him. Like, it's that, candy. You're, you're that gives me yeah. a lot of hope. <laughs>
you know, Again. why don't you tell your liberal grandmother that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be great. Man, no, that, that, that gives me a lot of hope that a 13-year-old understands what's going oh, on. Oh, he, he Because he's it. the one who, yeah, he, he's the one who's going to pay the bill. Yeah. yeah. They're just printing money, Dad. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And, we're, and where's that money going? He goes, it's just everywhere. Yeah. Well, and, you know, we keep hearing all these analogies to Rome, right? You know, what's going on in America and, the, you know. Well, this is exactly what happened. Yeah. They just had runaway spending. They just kept printing more money, and then they wondered why everything collapsed. Yeah, you I have never thought about Rome so much in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> according to social media, I am thinking about Rome a lot. I, I don't get it, because I don't either. But and but, but I mean, it's and a great I analogy. Just, I was just I w- you know I was just in Rome, and I loved it. But I even then I didn't think about Roman. Warriors <laughs> <laughs> and the downfall of Rome. Right. Well, uh, but, but the similarity—I mean, you're right to bring it up. The similarities are are stark, and, yeah. and, and we're joking right now in, in a way because it's an uncomfortable subject. This, what we're seeing in our economy and what we're going to see for future years, because of the lack of will, lack and of that's will. basically what it is—the yeah. lack of will to do what's right, and and to characterize spending. What really slowing the rate of increase of spending as cuts, yeah. which I've never understood. But right. the Democrats have been great at doing that, and the Republicans have no they have way of messaged, communicating really yeah, the, yeah, they've the messaged reality. that very effectively, yeah. and and it just it's it's been that way for decades. Yeah. And it's I, I'd I'd like to see. In fact, I'd like to see our candidates for president start talking about this more. And you you in the last debate they talked a little bit about it. Um, but let's go back to zero based budgeting. Let's see how, right. yeah, how the federal government likes that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of companies that, that do zero-based budgeting for, for that precise reason. Because, yeah. um, I mean, Anheuser-Busch is, is, is one of those companies. That, yeah. that but they we, need we, it really badly we, now. Yeah, they, yeah, they, 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 they do. <laughs> they, they do so much so they're laying more people off. Yeah. So. Right. Imagine yeah. that. Imagine the writing's they, they on actually, the wall. They're, they're doing things to stay fiscally solvent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we need to lay some federal workers off. We're, it's, it, it's inflated. There's just no question. How about everybody at the Department of Education? We'll start there. <laughs> then we'll go to the EPA. To yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. definitely plenty. Yeah. So, Karen, what, um, what, what can we do? What can we do? What can our listeners do? How can we be a part of the process and what needs to happen? Well, to move this uh, of course, I'd love to just send everybody to our website, www.balancebudgetnow.com. Um, but uh, let me let me just go back a little bit on process because sure. you know I I assume I know a little bit more about process than most people, but this gave me an opportunity to to review you know the amendment process. Mm-hmm. And um, for those that don't know, it's pretty simple. It's either two thirds of state legislators leg- legislatures or two thirds of Congress to propose an amendment, and then three quarters of the states or thirty eight states have to ratify it. So this is not an easy. It, right. You know, it's simple, but it's not easy. It's never meant to be easy. Right. right. And uh, it's a long process. Mm. You know, as I mentioned earlier, Ronald Reagan, uh, when he was here, he he got it up to 32 states. After we lost Ronald Reagan, several states rescinded their calls um, down to 11 states. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We have now, through the current leader of the effort, it's now back up to 27 states, and we feel pretty confident that we're going to get add two more states in 20. Uh, 2024, possibly three. Uh, we're focused right now on, on Idaho and South Carolina. Depending on how the election goes in Virginia, we might add Virginia to that list. And Governor Yunkin is working very, very hard to flip his Senate. If he, he does is. that, then they become um, a, a state that is certainly within reach. Arizona passed it in 2017. Uh, it's one of the 27 states. So the closer we get, the more attention we're going to get from Congress right. and the more they know they're going to have to have to do something. But it's going to take everybody, you know, calling your, you know, ma- making sure everybody who's in the, you know, in that list of 27 stays there um, in the states that we need, you know, to the extent we've got, you know, listeners in Idaho, South Carolina, Kentucky, Montana, Virginia, um, they can encourage their legislative bodies to take action, regardless of whether, you know, it's Republican or Democrat. Just, uh, you know, the more people know about this issue, uh, the better off we're going to be. Yeah. And quite frankly, now that you know people can't buy houses, and every time they go to the grocery store, they need to take their wheelbarrow will full of money <laughs> right. to pay their bill. Um, you know, people are just naturally more inclined to listen and to understand the ramifications of it. Because 
you know, we might not ever go bankrupt because we can continue printing money, but we can certainly go insolvent. And I think it's important, a couple of data points. We're spending more now on interest than we are in our Department of Defense. Yep. That's a, that's a nice recent it's development. Insane. It's yeah. insane. We also are about to start borrowing money to pay the interest on dollars we've already spent. Yeah. That's kind of a, called that, a, a Ponzi is, scheme. That is, that's, that's what we call a death spiral. Yeah. It is. I it, mean, it, it that's is. unbelievable. And then it's not, I mean, clearly not sustainable. Yeah. Whew. Wow. So. I just got like really depressed. <laughs> <laughs> but well, and all the more reason to be doing this, which mm-hmm. I, I applaud you absolutely for taking a leadership role on this. This is because it's hard. I mean, that's the thing is that people will say, oh, yeah, I, I'm sure you got this when you were running for governor. People will say, oh, yeah, I support you, Karen. And you say, well, send me a check. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, maybe maybe I can next week, right. you know. Right. And so it's this is the same thing. People, oh yeah, I I'm fiscally conservative, but oh, oh you want me to actually do something about it? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe I can't do that. Well, you're going to get me started on something <laughs> that I won't be able to shut up about. But you know, as Americans, we we have this blessing of self government. Mm-hmm. And we're all obligated in whatever way we can to get involved. And there are people out there. Everybody will be impacted by the insolvency of the United States, whether you're, you know, uh, living paycheck to paycheck, or whether you've got a, a huge estate to pass on to your children. Yeah. You, all of you, everybody, all of us will be impacted. And so you have to get involved. And 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 again, whether it's you know donating to the cause and the effort or writing to your legislator, or whatever it is. You don't get a pass in America. If you take a pass, you deserve what you get, quite sure. frankly. That's a great point. So. Absolutely what, great point. Let me ask you this. I mean, this comes up a lot in, in conversation and discussion. What percentage of our of our debt is owned by China? I don't know. We don't. I mean, do I we know, know that? We, I, it, it, people sure throw that out really a lot. I mean, it, it's a lot. And Rand Paul, it just comes to mind, that he's, he's pretty good at going on the Senate floor saying, we should not be increasing our budget because all we're doing is borrowing from China to give to somebody else. Right. And, um, and that's the scary part is that the, the interconnectedness of, of our economy, of our debt, of our, our, of our government with that of China when they are the, really the mon- number one geopolitical I guess adversary, adversary that we have right now, mm-hmm. and you see what what they're doing in the Middle East, and then and and we're going to get to that in another podcast. But but it's scary because when you look at this debt, and and you know that they own a lot of it, so and a lot of it's owned by everyday citizens, by bonds and by yeah. by mm-hmm. treasuries. Mm-hmm. But but that interconnectedness that that if if they really go down, it can affect our economy. If we go down, it can affect their economy mm-hmm. and the global economy. Right. And, well, and, and if that's not a call to action, I don't know what is. Right. And, and our saving grace thus far has been that we're the world's reserve currency. Yes. Right. You know, but even, the, even those actors are trying to change that. That's right. That's right. And people say, oh, that'll never happen. Well, don't, uh, you know, you, th- you might yeah. think that at your peril. You have to right. do everything you can to make sure we, we remain the world's reserve currency. Because China have, desperately wants that to be different. That's right, yeah. and you know they are they are busy driving, uh, you know, diplomatic, military, economic wedges between us and our allies. Sure, and they're not going to let up anytime soon. Um, one of the uh, new newest members of our team on this effort is Mick Mulvaney, mm. who yes. is congressman, OMB director, chief of staff. He knows the budget is good or better than anyone. Yeah, we've had and, him on the show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so th- this is an issue that obviously he's he's got a credible voice on, and you know the issue of our reserve currency is an you know important issue to him. Yeah, it should be to all of us. Yeah, Mick's brilliant, and I also saw on your website that you, you have Steve Moore involved. Yes, and we're going to be interviewing him in the next couple of weeks. Well, December yeah. December first at he, the ASU. Here we got ASU. We're doing yeah. a we're doing a live podcast. We're doing a live podcast yeah, okay. at ASU well, with he, an audience. He, he was uh, he was my chief economic uh, policy advisor on my campaign. Yeah. Oh, great. Steve's great. Yeah, he's great guy. Great guy. So. Well, thank you so much for yes. being here and for the work that you're doing. Yeah. And, well, and, and we're so for, and we're blessed as a state that you're so still involved. And, yeah. And well, in the nation, not just I mean, in this, sounding but. the alarm on on what is one of the biggest challenges that our nation faces, frankly. 
is is the spending and this debt because I mean there you, yes there's all kinds of other issues that we have to focus on but if we don't have the ability to fund those challenges you know we're screwed right so shame yeah. shame on us yeah. so Thank you. Thank yeah, you for having me. Yeah, for sure. Me. We have a massive military challenge now and in, yeah. in the near future, and we're only spending 3% of our GDP. Yeah. The lowest, I mean, the lowest of the low. Yeah. We, we used to spend 41% of our GDP during World War II. Sure. And it went down to like, you know, 20-something in the Korean War, 15 in the Vietnam War, and, and, and we cannot get it back up to 4% to save our life. And yeah. we, we And we, it should be at 8. It should be. Well, and should be. the way to get it to 8 is to get the other – cut the spending on the other stuff yep. i mean it's not right. we, we need to you know the security of the country is an actual job of the federal government not a whole bunch of the other crap that's that right. we're spending yeah that's right it's a national security issue yeah you know china it can is. sit back and watch us you know add up our debt and just pile on pile on pile on and they know that 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 hinders our ability to 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 militarily defend us yeah and our allies Good. Well, thank you, Karen. Thank yeah, you. Thanks for Appreciate coming it. on. God bless you. And uh, so we encourage people to go to, what's the website? www.balancedbudgetnow.com. All right. Yeah. You heard it here. Thank Get you. active and donate. Thank you. Great. Thanks, right. everybody. Thanks for listening. Take care.